Now, parliamentarians here in France will debate modifications on the current law on a patient's right to die. It's a thorny debate with campaigners eager to see reforms to the system, which does not currently allow euthanasia or assisted suicide. Eve Irvine and Jonathan Walsh met with patients and medical practitioners to ask those directly concerned what they think of France's end-of-life care. Claude Voisin was terrified when he heard he was going to palliative care. It frightened me, and I know that my loved ones felt the same. That word, palliative, it's scary. To me it meant that life was already over. It's a barbaric word. I'd like to find a word that fits the reality of this place better. At 76, Claude has been on oxygen for 13 years and has cancerous tumours on his lungs. He's been here five weeks and after speaking to a psychiatrist, feels better about where he is in life. He's changed a lot since he came here. For me, he's gone back four months health-wise. He's breathing better, he's eating better. He found the will to live again. Helped in part by the small pleasures. At lunchtime, for example, they brought me in a glass of wine, Beaujolais Nouveau. I enjoyed it. Living out whatever life is left, palliative care does not believe in artificially slowing down the arrival of death, but it does not want to speed it up either. This unit is made up of 40 beds, almost 30 nurses, 30 carers and 6 doctors. A new patient has just arrived. So first of all, what we're going to do is give him Hypnoval to try and help him relax a bit. It will help make him comfortable. When you stroke his arm to reassure him, he does relax a bit. Alice, you saw him too. He even started to cooperate. Dealing with fear is the first step. Then there's the question of pain. Since 2005, a law states no patient need be left suffering. We can handle it quite well. I'd say we're able to ease 95% of pain symptoms that we're faced with here. When we can't relieve a symptom, we do thankfully have a last option, which is possible thanks to the Leonetti law, which is to sedate the patient. We use this type of sedation when the pain is at a peak. When the pain becomes uncontrollable and our usual painkillers aren't strong enough to sufficiently help the patient. On average, four patients a year require a temporary sedation out of over 600 treated. Any sedation here is temporary. The patient can be woken up to assess the situation. These medics are against terminal sedation, that is, putting the patient to sleep until they pass away. There are patients who ask you to help them die quite regularly. There are those who tell you simply it has to end. For them it's because there is a symptom that is not being treated, or a fear that hasn't been dealt with. And then there are other patients who want you to help them die because they fail to find any sense in what is happening to them. Staff here say these symptoms can be addressed and that deep down everyone wants to live as long as possible. Only 15% of the French have access to palliative care units. Dr. Bernard Sanet opened a centre but says it doesn't always go far enough. Practicing for four decades, he's helped a patient or two die every year. I had a young patient, 14 years of age, who was very ill with cancer. She had been treated for two years already. She said she wanted to celebrate her 14th birthday with her friends. She was already in a wheelchair and on oxygen. She was really in a bad shape. So she told me, after my birthday, I'd like you to help me end all this, because I can't go on like that. And like I think many other doctors in this country, I worked with her and I helped her pass away. This took maybe two, three weeks, no more, before the end. Dr. Sene says his move was the only compassionate option. So it struck me, what I was doing here was completely illegal. In the eyes of the law, this was criminal court material. I could have been condemned with premeditated murder.
Since 2005, people can refuse treatment. If something happens and they can no longer communicate, they need to have written down what they want. I do not want to be kept alive artificially. I do not want treatment of any kind, no operations. I want to die peacefully in my own home. The letter, however, cannot demand euthanasia, as it's still illegal. Claude Ory set up an association to fight for euthanasia. Today, she's visiting a member. Almost 80, Christian had a health scare two years ago that saw him rush to hospital. They wanted to do tests. I don't want any of that. The doctor wanted to operate, but I said, stop. I don't want that. Determined to live only with the quality of health he currently enjoys, Christian decided to plan how he would go. Since I made that decision, I feel better. And I can tell you that very soon, I will go and find a way to buy the lethal product and have it at home, to feel safe. Ideally, I would have her beside me and hold my hand and that I would go quietly. But she can't be there, so I will die alone. Recently, an 84-year-old man shot his wife in her hospital bed before turning the gun on himself. A violent end to life that made Christian very angry. That poor couple in their 80s who had to go in an awfully violent way. If they had been Swiss or Belgian, they would have died peacefully, hand in hand, as lovers. And that, that shook me completely. Assisted suicide is allowed in Switzerland. Belgium allows euthanasia since 2002, but only under strict conditions. The patient has to be terminally ill and in pain. The Netherlands and Luxembourg have similar laws.